Hi guys, today we're gonna watch how I painted this pomegranate painting, which I had a really lot of fun in uh, doing so. I just love the reds and greens and how it all turned out. So let's jump into the process, shall we? Before I start painting or sketching, I draw on a grid. It's basically a, f a couple of dots in the middle of the field and then some crosses for an estimation of the in-between spots there. Then I start sketching the poem grenadine with a white pit pastel pencil. I like this because it's light and it doesn't mix easily with your paint. Then I take some water mixable oil paint, which I thin down with water. This is a raw umber, by the way. And I go over the lines. I keep it rough, it's just to give me well, estimation of locations in the painting of uh, edges. I start with the outsides and uh, when those are done I start working my way inside also. The seeds I also roughly put in there, not too much detail, not too much shading, nothing of that, just indications. Then it's time to start to add some shadows just to indicate the darker parts of the piece I feel it helps me a lot when I prepare my paintings in this way because I have the general position of where I want my colors later on. So that's a, a worry less, so to speak. And it prevents from smudging out when you do a, a la prima piece. Mind you, this is water-based oil paint, so I don't use any solvents, just water to get it down to this. Here I darken it a bit more because that will really be a very dark point. On the palette from right to left, we have uh, first titanium right, followed by um, lemon yellow, and then we have the yellow ochre, so followed by pearl red, then some alizarin crimson. Now, I use Cobar water mixable oil paints for basically all my paintings, and there's one color <laughs> which they don't have, so the Alizarin Crimson is actually a Winsor & Newton, and this is a non-water mixable version. Uh, however, it's still mixable with the water mixable oil paints. And um, if you have a mixture of 70%, or at least 70% water mixable oil paint, and you combine that with Alizarin Crimson for the remainder, you can still mix it down with some water if you wish. Continuing on, we have Thalo Green which is a lovely bluish green color, which is very transparent. And as you can see on the bottom left corner there, that's um, uh, the thalo green mixed to uh, with white, titanium white, and to get the real dark notes, it's mixed with black. Next to the thalo green, we have some ultramarine blue and some ivory black, which I use very sparingly, those two. Then on the palette itself, you see uh, different values of red to get the very dark red part on the left. It's a mix of alizarin crimson with some blue, and then you know it, it's uh, a bit less on the right side of that, and on and on. Then those are the colors for my <coughs> pomegranate seeds, basically. Below there I have a bit more saturated versions, which I also would like to blend into the skin. I want to keep the skin a bit thin. Then in the lower right corner I prepared some colors for the flesh of the fruit itself, the white, the white looking flesh. And as with pomegranates they tend to bleed a bit, uh, I also added some reds in there as well. I start with the darkest areas first, and this is basically the dark red mixture of alizarin crimson. In the background I have a mixture of thalo green and black to get those first spots in. Now, a little bit lighter mix with alizarin crimson, I put it very thinly on there so you can still see the, the undercolor through. Here I'm starting with the skin, 
and I'm just using uh, simple brush marks as you can tell. In this stage I really like to keep it simple and get the canvas uh, covered a bit so I can uh, easily see the relationship between the colors on each other. Here we're starting to blend a little bit because I don't want any focus on the bottom area. Here we're adding some bluish green colors for the for the tip. And as you can see, this is a very white part on the reference picture, but I'm keeping it a bit uh, darker still. Up here is where there's a little bit of bleeding of the pomegranate juice onto the skin, of, on, onto the flesh. Here in the shadows, I'm using that mixture with some uh, phthalo green mixed into it, which will also come back in the background and foreground later on. Now we have quite some color on the piece and it's start to, starting to get interesting. Here I'm filling up the background of the canvas and I'm defining the edges. I want these edges to be sharp so I take my time and do that with firm one-time strokes. And by filling in the whole background it's easier for me to relate the colors with each other and uh, because you get a close view of the final painting, not a color wise. But for now it's just about making interesting shapes by defining those edges. And as you can see it's really starting to pop out now. Then the foreground also, it's a beautiful turquoise uh, color and it softly blends into the darker background as you can see. At the end of the video I will uh, show you a picture of the final uh, painting where you can see the, the true colors because I do apologize for the colors of this video, it's not the best quality, for the next time I will uh, ensure that's better. Here we're adding some separate seeds which are sprinkled on the table as well. Continue with some lighter parts in the painting itself, and defining the shapes of the seeds a bit more. Seeds are actually a very simple concept. Uh, it, it basically has a darker outside ring and uh, in the middle it's more vibrant of color, as you can see in the reference on the left as well. I don't stay in one spot too long. I move all over the place. And for me that's uh, easier to work and to keep an overview on what I'm making and that it gradually builds up. And here you can start seeing the piece slowly coming alive when we're adding those more vibrant reds, the lighter reds, in those seeds. Then you really start seeing that they're individual seeds, even as they're painted in a kind of a clustered matter. But this is what brings the illusion to me of a pomegranate, a fresh one, just opened up. Not all the seeds are painted into detail. We leave a lot for the suggestion also. But the mind of the viewer can work by itself. We just need to give the viewer just enough information that their brain can fill in the rest. That's what I like about painting. You know, you can leave out some information and people are still able to see what you intend to show. And here you see the area I'm working on now for added depth. It's uh, nice and dark there, coming forth. The seeds in the front, uh, I want to keep them a little bit out of focus because I don't want our viewer to focus too much on those. So I kind of blend the edges of those seeds with the, with the background, very soft, gentle. I 
want to have a sharp focus on these edges. You know, it's a, it's a high contrast with the dark background, and I think those edges can be quite sharp. So I'm fine-tuning that here. The foreground I, I leave a bit more soft so you, as a viewer, get more dragged into the piece. Also here on the crown, I'm uh, adding some more depth and, and sharper edges in there, because that's part of the pomegranate, and I'm interested also in that part. I like to look at it. Here it's mainly about refining, um, blending a little bit. I try not to over blend because I think that creates a, a bit more sterile piece. I'd like to see brushwork in there still. But for points I don't want to have too much focus on, I think it's nice to blend. As you can see, I'm adding more colors and depth into the flesh at this moment. So it, uh, it, it, it shows you that it has dynamic in it and, and different shapes. The seeds also get minor adjustments here. And this is where we start with the first highlights, bringing them to life. Get that beautiful shine on those. If you look closely at the reference, you see different types of highlights. You see this very sharp light, but also the bit more blue, grayish um, shapes. They do a lot with the form and illusion of depth. So keep those thin. And for the real highlights, I use a palette knife and I basically lay on a very light value. Mind you, it's still not pure white. It's always with a little mix. I believe I put some uh, a little bit of the uh, thalo green in there. Just a very small pinch. Because of course, red and green, they go awesomely together. So I think it's nice to play around with that. Thanks for watching guys, and uh, I hope you learned something from it. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down below in the comment section. And of course, a like and subscribe would be highly appreciated. Um, for your information, I created the, the reference picture for this poem granite myself, and I've put it up on Instagram uh, for the food paint challenge, in which I invite other artists to paint the same subject with the same reference picture in their own style. So. If you like painting, please head on over to Instagram and, uh, and join in. Thank you very much and have a nice day.